Hi, I'm Robin. I'm the Green Smoothie Girl, and I'm here today in my favorite health food store, The Good Earth. There's five of them here on the Wasatch Front where I live. You can find similar products wherever you live in other health food stores. I'm here in the bulk foods. I pretty much live here. These are some of the products that I use all the time, and I just want to run through them really quickly. First of all, we have two different kinds of flaxseed that are pretty commonly available. The brown ones are the ones you're probably most familiar with, but golden flax seeds have a different flavor, um, a little bit different nutritional profile, and kind of a, um, a, a bu more buttery taste. And I like to, to change it up and use different ones. Raw sunflower seeds and raw pumpkin seeds are a staple in my house. I use them in my granolas. Hopefully you have my recipes in chapter 10 of 12 steps for sprouted live granola or also a baked one. I would highly recommend you get raw sunflower seeds over the, um, the roasted and salted, okay? Always get the raw seed if you can. And then if you soak it overnight and you dehydrate it, you've got live sprouted nutrition in your, in your nuts and seeds. Hemp seed is a really popular product. Um, it's very high in protein. It has tons of amino acids and really good omega fatty acids. I like it. I think it's pretty expensive relative to like flax and chia. Chia is pretty expensive too. Um, but you can use it in a variety of products when you need a very small seed and kind of a nutty, crunchy texture. Spelt is kind of like wheat, but it's an ancient non-hybridized wheat. So sometimes people who have gluten intolerances do really well with spelt. The grain is larger. Um, we, have some pan we have a pancake recipe I know in chapter 10 using spelt that I love. I do keep spelt on hand. Um, these are soft white pastry uh, wheat grains and you can actually make um, much softer pastry flour if you're making cookies or cakes using this, this particular wheat berry. There's a big difference between that and the hard winter wheat. Um, yellow cornmeal. Did you know that you can make your own cornmeal with regular yellow popcorn? If you've got a wheat grinder, you can make your own cornmeal, but you can also buy it here. Notice that there's a regular or a conventional and an organic in a lot of these products. Um, for me, I decide to buy organic if it's not more than 50% more expensive than the other. You need to set your own price point based on your tolerance and your, your um, budget, but that's what I do so that I'm not in the store agonizing over whether to buy conventional or whether to buy organic. Here's chia seeds. Chia seeds are a wonderful egg replacement. One tablespoon of chia and three tablespoons of water replaces an egg if you're trying to stay away from animal products. It's also great if you like to eat late at night um, and you can't stand going to bed hungry. Eat a spoonful of chia and then drink a big glass of water because it absorbs ten times its own weight in water. So um, another thing that's great to have on hand, very filling, high in protein, fantastic mineral profile, high in iron. Let's see, what else have we got here? I try to not use a lot of the exotic nuts like macadamias and pine nuts in my recipes. They're wonderful, they're good nutrition, they're high in fat, but they're very expensive. And I want you to stay on a whole foods diet, so I don't want to burn you out with super expensive stuff. They're great for raw desserts. Um, we've got almonds here and cashews. Always have those on hand. I have lots of recipes using those ingredients. And also walnuts. Sometimes you can buy things in bulk in pieces, like walnut pieces, and they're much less expensive than regular walnuts. And if you're gonna chop them anyway, why not, and save some money. Okay, so now we're on to some things that we might think of as grains that actually aren't grains. Those of you who are dealing with gluten intolerance, or who just don't do well with grains, these are higher in protein, they have no gluten, and they're a wonderful substitute for lots of animal products if you're trying to get onto something that stands in for meat dishes. High in protein, we have quinoa and red quinoa. And I have lots of recipes for quinoa. It's one of my favorite foods. It's so quick to prepare. It takes like 10 minutes to cook is all. It's very soft, kind of has a nutty flavor. And any vegetables and any of my dressings in, in chapter three of 12 steps go great with quinoa. Um, you've got millet, which is the only grain that is alkaline. Um, we have a millet porridge in chapter 10. 
Um, I love to cook it. It's also very quick to prepare and mild in flavor. Buckwheat. This is the roasted buckwheat that you make kasha cereal with, which you have a recipe for in the breakfast chapter, chapter 10. And then we've got raw buckwheat here, which you can grind and use in um, pancakes. Buckwheat pancakes are fantastic, and you can get it here. Down here, we have a lot of different flours. And while you're welcome to buy flour if you don't have a wheat grinder, with any grain grinder, and they cost you know, $150, $200, you can get these that will last you years in your storage and then grind them so that they don't go rancid. Sometimes flours, um, especially like wheat flour, will go rancid in a matter of weeks. Um, pearled barley or hulled barley is a more whole food product than the pearled. And we have, it's a great product to put in soup. Use it like rice. And again, the more variety you can get with all these different whole foods, the better. And oat growth. Some people don't know what this looks like, but this is what it looks like before they roll it. And you can soak this, and we have a great uh, breakfast pudding recipe with soaked, sprouted oat groats. More of my favorite things here in bulk foods at the Good Earth, there's whole wheat couscous, which is a tiny little pasta. It cooks in a matter of minutes, and it'll be very familiar to you. If you're transitioning to whole foods, a whole grain couscous is a great place to start. Um, it doesn't taste like uh, you know, a high fiber grain. It's, it's a step up from, from white pasta. It's not as good as using the actual whole grain itself. A lot of different rices here. The ones I wouldn't use is sushi rice and white rice. These are refined foods. The brown rices, short grain brown rice, long grain brown basmati rice. Sweet brown rice is kind of my new favorite one. It's so great in breakfasts. Like we have a recipe in chapter four for for um, rice pudding. And then a wild rice blend has a great nutty flavor to it. These are regular rolled, o rolled oats. Please don't buy instant oats. Instant rolled oats are actually a processed food. They've been cooked already and dehydrated, so get regular. It takes a little bit longer to cook, but it's worth it. And just to branch out, try rye flakes. It's just rolled rye berries. And barley flakes, try that too as cereal, just to give yourself something uh, a little bit different taste. There's some um, dehydrated soups here at my health food store and I've used each of them and I like them. They make great kind of quick dinners and they are made from the whole grain. You can even make an, a natural vegan burger by reconstituting this with water. Um, this is a mineral rock salt that is not refined. Xylitol is not my favorite sweetener. It is highly refined. This is Sucanat. It is a, an improvement on regular cane sugar because it is um, evaporated cane juice. I would not say on a scale of 1 to 10 it's a 10 kind of a product. It's better than refined sugar. It's basically unrefined sugar. High in nutrients still a concentrated sweetener, we still want to use it sparingly. Okay, we've also got a bunch of sproutable small beans down here, mung beans, black soybeans, and regular soybeans, adzuki and black turtle. You can sprout those. Um, these are for pretty die-hard nutrition freaks. Not many people take those beans and put them in salads, but the nutrition is incredible if you're willing to do it. You just have to sprout them for about two to three days. And just finishing up here in my bulk food section of the Good Earth, dates are a very major ingredient in some of my sweet recipes. And if you don't want to spend like three twenty-five a pound, one thing you can do is get chopped dates that are rolled in oat flour, and you're going to cut the price in half. Um, I use this in hot pink breakfast smoothie. It's also, dates are also a very high nutrition sweetener and they are a whole food unlike the concentrated sweeteners. And then another thing is my kids and I eat as treats that we love is papaya spears or um, dried mango. And if you can, get kind with no sugar added and without sulfur. So that's a little tour of the bulk foods at the Good Earth. I think you can find very similar things at your health food store. Have fun with that.